Hey there, Sam. Suppose we are running multiple database operations, and these operations are dependent on each other. For example, operation number one would create a new user, and operation number two would create a new post that has the new user ID as its foreign key. And operation number three would create a new command that will use the new post in operation number two as its foreign key. Now, on the best scenario, everything will go smoothly, and these three resources will be created without any issue. However, shit does happen in real life. There's a chance that operation number two and operation number three would go wrong and will be leaving the new user created in operation number one alone in a database. And that is certainly not ideal because the purpose of the new user created is to have a new post and a new command attached to it. If the new post and the new command are not created, we should also clear out the new user record. And now here's the question. Is there a feature that will take care of this for us? And the answer is yes. And it is called database transaction. So if we put all these three operations under a database transaction, the operation in this transaction will only be applied when every one of them passes. If any of the operations in the transaction failed, then the transaction will try to roll back all the changes that have been made so far and hence go back to the point before the transaction has started. So that means if operation number three failed, the transaction will remove the post created in operation number two and also the user created in operation number one. Now let's go to our code and see how we can use transaction in Laravel. So here we're in our post controller. And let's say whenever we create a new post, we also want to associate the newly created post with some existing users. That is pretty straightforward. We just need to call the sync method from the user relation. And inside the sync method, we need to pass in an array of user IDs. And let's just say in the request body, that's an array called user IDs. Now, there are two database operations here. One is to create a new record in the post table, and the other one will be inserting records into the pivot table between post and users. Since there are two database operations here, there's a chance that one of them will fail. So we do want to wrap them inside a transaction. Laravel makes it extremely simple for us to start a transaction. All we need to do is to call the db facade and the transaction method. The transaction method accepts a callback function, and this is where we define all of the operations involved in this transaction. Let's refactor our code to fix the error. Now, whatever we return in a callback function will be the result of the transaction. I'll return the create a post in a callback function so that we can reference it in a JSON response. Okay, let's test our code. We'll go to Postman and send a post request to create a post. We'll define our request body and set a title field, body field, and a user IDs field. Click on send, and we get a response back. Seems like our code is working. Let's verify if our pivot table got populated. We'll go to workbench and view the post user table. And as you can see, we have post ID 5 linked to user 1 and 2. Great, and that's basically it. That's how we can define a transaction in Laravel. Key takeaway for this lesson, Database transaction groups multiple database operations together and only applies the operations when all of them passed. It will roll back any changes if one of the operations failed. We use the transaction method in a DB facade to trigger a transaction. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.